Okay, so today we're going to look at part two of this polynomials unit. No, we just did part one. Remember, you guys, last week set the schedule that Friday we would start part one, and then we'd start part two this week. Now, I have to apologize. I had these couple absences this week. Um, Mon uh, Tuesday I was sick. That was legit. Uh, yesterday I had an, a doctor's appointment. So I had to, it wasn't for me, it was actually my mom. I had to take my mom to the doctor. So I took the day to make sure that that worked out right. She, you know, she had, she thought she had breast cancer and stuff. So it did, she didn't, it was good news, but nonetheless, it was an important day to make sure. I, so the sub had instructions to let you guys work, but there was bonus assignments if available, if you guys wanted to tap into those. I don't know if you did. Yeah, I can, I'll, later in the period, remind me, I'll show you the note I wrote the sub, but you know what, they're subs. They don't always do what they're supposed to do. Um, okay, let's push that aside. Today, we're going to look at part two, okay? Please let me know if what I'm explaining to you it doesn't make sense. I'm going to try a couple different ways to get through to you guys. There is a little overlap with part one. So some of this, you'll be like, didn't we already talk about this? Yes, but it's important enough that it requires, I think, that we'll just sort of go over it again, Okay. So first of all, let's take a look at one of the curricular points. We're not going to read all of it, but this is what the Manitoba curriculum says. In this unit, it says you need to explain the operation of the addition and subtraction of polynomial expressions. And you're supposed to be able to do it a couple different ways, concretely, pictorially, symbolically. Don't worry about those words. Just know that you need to be able to add and subtract polynomials or algebra terms. Okay. From there, it goes into more detail, but essentially that you need to know how to add and subtract these algebra terms. Now, what you're going to see in part three is you also need to be able to divide and multiply these terms. Okay. That's a little more complicated. Um, we'll look at that next week, but for today, let's just focus on adding and subtracting. Okay. So here's the overlap. When I'm talking about algebra, okay, and I'm talking about an algebraic expression. An expression is those combination of terms. However, an equation in algebra is a statement that has two expressions separated by an equal sign. So this is actually an expression. 5 plus 3 equals 8. There's no variables in that. It's all just constants. But it's, the expression is true because it balances. So like I said to you guys before, if you think of the equal sign as the part of the teeter-totter that balances both halves of the teeter-totter, this side has to balance this side, otherwise it isn't true. It's a lie, okay? An open sentence is an equation where we don't know something that keeps it balanced. This is where algebra comes in. This is where the variable comes in. So if I say something plus 5 equals 2, there's actually only one thing that makes that open sentence an equation that's true. In other words, there's only one thing I can put into x here to make this true. And what I put in there is negative 3. If I put a negative 3 in there, this becomes true. Okay? So that's simply what it means. But how you deal with that and the techniques to solve these things is the stuff that I want to make sure you guys have a good, strong recipe for success for, okay? So this is the overlap here a little bit. When we are balancing an equation, we are moving things around on the teeter-totter. We're moving things from one side to the other to keep it in balance, okay? What we're looking for is the word isolate, right? Isolation means to be by yourself, and that's what we want. We want our variable all by itself. We want it to be lonely on one side of the teeter-totter, and everything on the other side will be balanced, but that'll give us our answer. If we can put our variable on one side and everything else on the other side, we will essentially solve it, okay? The terms that sometimes you use in math, yes, sure, is the left-hand side and the right-hand side. Now, it doesn't really matter which side you isolate the variable on, but generally, we isolate it on the left side, and we put our other stuff on the right side. Okay, here's an example. Simple one, you've seen it before. There's a teeter-totter. The middle of the teeter-totter is the equal sign. 
which means everything on this side balances everything on the right hand side. But what we don't have is we don't have the variable isolated. The variable is not alone over here. We need it to be alone. We need it by itself. So the technique is to start shifting things around, moving things around, creating a way to get x by itself. Now there's various ways we can do this, but the simplest way again is to balance one side. Whatever I do to one side, I do to the other side. That always keeps the balance. What I do to one side, I must do to the other. Say it out loud with me. What I do to one side, I do to the other. What I do to one side, I do to the other. Always, always, always. So to get rid of negative 2, that's a term right there, negative 2, I just add 2, right? To get rid of a negative, I put it in a positive. I put in the opposite. But what I do to one side, I do to the other side. Now I start balancing it out again. Negative 2 plus positive 2 just cancels. It becomes 0, which means I'm left with just x on that side. So now all I have is x. But with the other side, I now have a 6 plus a 2. Well, 6 plus 2 is 8. And again, for some of you, you don't need to go through all that rigmarole because you probably saw 8 minus 2 equals 6. But they're never going to always be that easy. Yes, Brian. OK, this is just a diagram. This is, a, this is a, um, animation. Let's not do it in animation form. Let's do it as if it was on an actual assignment. OK? And I'll use a different number. x plus 3 equals 13. And you have to figure out what x is. OK? So again, we need everything on the left-hand side to just be a variable. Everything on the right-hand side should be everything else. So we don't have just a variable over there. We have a variable in a 3. So how do I get rid of positive 3? Brian, what would be your suggestion? How do I get rid of this plus 3? Because I don't want it over there. I want just x. Minus 3. That's right. You subtract 3, and 3 minus 3 makes nothing. But what I do to one side, I do to the other. 13 minus 3 is 10. I've left with x on its own, and I'm done. Let's try another quick one, OK? On this side, I have x plus 2 equals 8. To get rid of the positive 2, I subtract 2. What I do to one side, I do to the other. 2 minus 2 is 0, leaving me just x. 8 minus 2 is 6. Now, I wish I could tell you they're all going to be this easy. They're obviously not. They're going to get more complicated, including, as we're going to see in a minute, situations like this. where you have variables on both sides. So now, whoa, whoa, this variable, how do I, I got to get that over there. I get all the variables over there and everything else on the other side. We'll get to that in a minute, but you can see it can get complicated quick. OK? Yes, Rain? Like here? Yeah. OK, so let's not get confused by that. OK, let's, let's move on. Now, eventually you're going to get to the parts where you're going to, and this happened, for example, in the uh, cross multiplication of the last unit, where you get to places like this, where you have something like 2x equals 10. 2 times something equals 10. Now, sometimes you can do that mentally. You can just go, oh, it's 5, right? 2 times 5 equals 10. But not always. Not always can you do that mentally. So the technique with this is, does anyone know? You do the opposite, OK? So what's happening here with 2x is it means 2 times x. What's the opposite of multiplication? Simon? Division, right. So instead of multiplying it by 2, I divide it by 2. I do the opposite. So let's do that in a more, not in an animation, but let's do it here, OK? So 2x equals 10. We know that 2 times x, because again, we're still trying to do the same thing. We're going to get x by itself. But this isn't 2 plus x. This means 2 times x. That's what that means. Let's be a little more specific. What, is, what do we call the number 2? What's, what's the word to describe it? 
No, not, not, no, but I mean the, the number, it could be any number. A coefficient, that's right. It's a number that multiplies a variable, okay? The opposite of multiplication is division. We divide by two. When we divide that by two, what's gonna happen is this and this will cancel each other out and it'll leave you with just x, which was the goal, to isolate x. But what I do to one side, I gotta do to the other. So since I divided this side by two, because that's the balance part, right? If you take a kid off one side of the um, teeter-totter, you gotta take a kid off the other to keep it balanced. If I add a kid to one side of the teeter-totter, I gotta add a kid to the other. So now I have 10 divided by two. Well, that's five. That's my answer, okay? It's going to come easier to you with practice. Okay, here you can see that again. With the balancing parts, I divide by two and I get the answer. Okay? Now, on more rare occasions, you're going to get ones where you have the opposite of multiplication happening. Something like this something divided by two equals negative five. Now, let's see how I would approach that one. Okay? Something divided by 2 equals negative 5. Well, the goal is still the same. I want x by itself. I want nothing on this side except x. But I can't because I have this division happening here. What's the opposite of division? Multiplication. So instead of dividing by 2, I should multiply by 2. So if I do that, if I multiply this side by 2 times 2, it just leaves me x. Now that might be hard for you to grasp why that happens. It does. I'll prove it to you in a minute. But for now, just accept the fact, and for some of you, that's where you should stop your thinking. Just accept the fact that if I multiply this side by two, the two goes away and I'm left with x. But what I do to one side, I better do to the other. What's negative five times two? No, not zero. Negative 10. Negative 5, because a negative times a positive equals a negative, right? All right, good. Now, for those of you who had trouble grasping why this actually works, why the 2 disappears, um, let me show that. For others of you, this is going to be confusing, so don't worry about this. Why does x over 2 times 2 give me just x? Well, what's 2 as a fraction? 2 over 1. How do I multiply two fractions? I multiply the two numerators, 2 times x is 2x, and I multiply the denominators, 2 times 1 is 2. Now I'm here. Can I simplify that? Yeah, I can cancel the 2's. And what am I left with? Just x. That's why it works. For some of you, don't worry about why it works. Just know that if I go the opposite of division, multiplication, I'm left with just x. So that's a simple thing. Do the opposite. Yes, Simon. Would it be positive 10? You know what? I actually think that's a good question. Okay. Would it be a positive? Okay, let's... There's a way to always test your answer. So here's what we have. We have this equation. Right? That's what it is. And we have two possible answers, negative 10 and positive 10. Which of these is it? We don't know. Simon, let's say you're sitting in a test and you have that very question. What, which one is it? The way you can test to see if you got it right is take the answer you have, positive 10, and plug it back into the equation, which is something I'm about to demonstrate to you guys. The way you do that, we did it in the unit before, is you rewrite the equation but instead of putting x, what do you put? No, well, yeah, but more specifically, you always, I always recommend you put brackets, remember? And then inside the brackets, put the value that you think it is. Let's do it with the other one. So on this one, brackets, it's negative 10. One of these two statements is true. One of them is not true. Now, if you have your calculator, you can type it. 10 divided by 2 equals 
What are you going to get? 10 divided by 2, what are you going to get? You're going to get 5. Not negative 5, positive 5. But then you're going to type in negative 10 divided by 2, and guess what answer you're going to get? You're going to get negative 5, which tells you this is the correct answer, which meant that this one was the correct one, and this one was wrong. Okay? That's the way you can check it. And I'm glad, Simon, actually that you brought it up because that's the next thing I wanted to actually talk about was that process of checking. Okay, so again, multiply by 2. It gets rid of this fraction and it leaves you with just x equals, okay, x equals negative 10. Okay, now it gets harder, okay? In this one, I've got variables on both sides. I've got a variable there. And I got a 5x over there. How do I deal with that? Okay. Well, as it gets more complicated, we have to again think about things in terms of terms. Okay. So x plus 7, 5x plus 3. Let me rewrite that up here. Okay. x plus 7 equals 5x. Was it plus 3? Plus 3. Okay. The equal sign is a dividing point. Everything on, again, this left-hand side has to equal this right-hand side. It's the divider. It's this little dividing point. Okay? But on each side, I can think of it as its own separate piece of cake, if you remember that analogy. So I've got this piece of cake over here, or a whole cake, equals some whole cake over here. And how do I carve up the cake? Well, it depends what's in there. You may recall what I said is to cut it up, go in front of any sign you see, positive or negative sign. So here's a positive sign, so I can cut it right there. There's no sign there, but we can assume it's positive. I go on this side and I cut it there. How many terms are in this whole equation? Four, right. There are four terms, four pieces of cake. There's two on this side, and there's two on this side. Okay? Now, what I want is I don't want the 5x over here. I don't want it over there. I want to get rid of 5x. How do I get rid of positive 5x? Not divided by 5, no, not quite. I want to get rid of the 5 and the x. I want to get rid of both of them. Not just the 5. That's right. Trey got it right. You subtract 5x. Right? That'll take the positive and the negative, and they'll just become nothing. But what I do to one side, I better do to the other. So I'm going to have to put a negative 5x over here as well. Another way you can think of it, this might be helpful, is when I shift 5x over to this side, it sign switches. So what was a positive 5x to get rid of it over here becomes a negative 5x over here. And that also works with the numbers. To get rid of a positive 7, I put a minus 7, right? Or, if I think of it this way, to move the 7 over to this side, I switch the sign. Okay? So now let's rewrite all that. So I have an x, the original x. I have a minus 5x. Now, I still have my equal sign. I still have a 3 over here. That 3 is still there. And that 7, which moved over there, has now become negative 7. Now I have a whole new thing here. I have x minus 5x equals 3 minus 7. I can start to whittle that down further. What's x minus 5x? Imagine I'm squishing... Now again, this is a whole other piece of cake here with two terms. Close, not 4. Negative 4x, right. Negative 4x. Now how about this one? What's 3 minus 7? Negative 4, that's right. Now we're getting even closer. Now we're at this point. Now we've got this. Negative 4x equals negative 4. We're not quite there yet. x is still not by itself. But now what do I do? 
divide both by negative 4. That's right. Which will cancel this out, leaving me with just x. But what I do to one side, I better do to the other. A negative divided by a negative equals a positive. 4 divided by 4? 1. We're done. Now, if we wanted to, we could check that. Remember I said you could always check it? You get this answer, how do I know if it's true? Well, I can go back to the original, which is x plus 7 equals 5x, what was it, plus 3? Is that what it was? And I rewrite it. And in place of the x, I put brackets. There's the same thing rewritten, but with brackets instead of the x. Then, into the brackets, I put my answer. Well, my answer was 1. I wonder if this will work. Well, let's keep whittling it down. 7 plus 1, 8. 5 times 1, 5 plus 3. Oh, what's 5 plus 3? Why, it's 8 equals 8. We have achieved balance, and we have solved this. Okay? Solving it is a matter of keeping it in balance, but you've got to practice this. Some of you might be still kind of fighting with this a little bit. It's going to come easier as you practice. Okay? Here's the animation that does the same thing. Subtracting 5, subtracting 7. Okay? Whittling it down. Combining terms. So here I'm combining them together. And then dividing by negative 4 to finally give you the answer that x equals 1. Okay? This is the check again. The check is to substitute your answer back into the original, but I always recommend you use brackets. You don't have to use brackets. There's no requirement of that, but I find you make less mistakes when you do. Okay? So there it is. This is what we just did a second ago. I rewrite it with brackets and the one in its place, and we're whittling it down, it balances. Okay? Okay. So this is, again, that whole idea. Taking the value and substituting it back using brackets. For example, this is a good question. If x equals negative 3, find the value of 2x minus 1. Okay, well, I just put the x instead of the x, I put negative 3 with brackets, right? Keep working it out, and I get negative 7, okay? The reason, again, for the brackets is it, I find it helps avoid calculation errors more. Because what some students will do is imagine the bracket wasn't there. What might that look like? 2 minus 3. Two minus three and that's not right. You're going to get the answer negative 1, right? Two, but it's not 2 minus 3. It's 2 times negative 3. So the brackets is like a visual cue to make sure you don't mess it up. Okay? Okay. Here's the actual curriculum now. What it said was to add and subtract. Hopefully, these are words that now make sense to you. Variables, constants, coefficients, expressions and equations, terms, like and unlike terms. Okay? And now the techniques you have that can help with this. Combining terms, using tiles if that's helpful, solving equations, evaluating equations. Okay? All right, let's try it. Here's the problem. In algebra, I'm asking you to take negative 5x plus 4 and add 2x plus 6. Well, just a minute. I don't have to write it in this like old school way. I can start rearranging this stuff. Watch, I made an animation for this for you guys. I'm going to rearrange it. I'm going to take that, put it there. That, I'm going to put it there. I'm going to take that and put it there. And that guy, I'm going to stick there. So now I get this. Same thing, just rearranged. What can I do now? I can seek out terms that are alike. Remember, a term is alike if it contains the same variables. Also, constants are alike because they have no variables. So there's two things on there that are alike. And then there are two other things that are alike. 5x, pardon me, negative 5x, and 2x, they're alike. So I can combine them. 
negative 5x and positive 2, it's like negative 5 plus 2, becomes negative 3x. Positive 4 and negative 6 becomes negative 2. And that's my answer. I'm done. But it's a matter of knowing that you can rearrange things, knowing that the sign goes with it, okay? Knowing what terms are, knowing that the sign goes with your term, knowing about things like dividing things up into terms, okay? That's important. Otherwise, it's easy to make mistakes. Okay. You can also do this with the tiles. Here's how you do it with tiles. Okay? With tiles, you're looking to generate zeros. Okay? Because tiles cancel each other out. So you may remember the long tiles are the X tiles. The little squares are 1. If it's filled in, it's positive. If it's hollow, it's negative. So, let's rewrite it. Negative 5X plus 4. Well, there's negative 5x's, right? They're hollow, and there's five of them. Positive four means I need four little ones, and they're filled in, so they're positive. Now I'll write the other part of this expression. 2x and a negative six. So these are two x's, they're positive. Yes, Simon? Again. Yeah. And then there's negative six tiles. Remember I said that thing, if it's working for you, Keep doing it. Well, yeah, something to think about. Um, all right. Now, with the tiles, remember, tiles cancel each other out. So I have two positive x, and I have two negative x's up there. Those will generate a zero. Similarly, these positives shh, will cancel out these negatives. And what am I left with? Well, let's take a look at what I'm left with three negative x's and two negative ones. And that's my answer. If you find the tiles useful, you should be able to manipulate with them, okay? I'm not a big fan of the tiles, again, personally, but if they're helpful to you, I am no way saying you shouldn't use them. You, should, you can draw them on tests. If the tiles help you, then use them, okay? But it's the same answer we got when we did it the other way. Okay, subtraction also works the same way. I'll just quickly zip through that. Okay, reverse the signs, generate the subtraction, cancel tiles out. So I'm left with one X there, one positive X, and I'm left with six negatives, and that's my answer. Okay? Okay, I don't want to oversell the whole tile thing, so we're going to move on. Let's just do a couple examples before the end of the period. All right. Some of you had this on the um, first assignment. Draw tiles, okay? So I'm drawing X tiles. I'm drawing four of them, and they will be negative. If they are negative, they will not be filled in. And there we go. Twice X less one is, again, twice X implies it's 2X. 2X means two positive Xs. Less one implies it's negative one. That's a negative tile. Now, believe it or not, that was actually an old exam question. Um, was on the exam was to actually do that. Um, whether it's a good question or not, that's debatable. But I want you guys to be aware of these types of questions. Here's another one. What does that mean? Anyone think they have an idea? Simon. Black means positive. Long tiles mean X. So what's this? Well, no, it's X. That's X. Shanice, you got to help him out. Okay, sorry. She, she's got it right, but you didn't hear her, so go ahead. Right equals, be clear, what sign is the 5? Positive 5, right. Okay, now we can solve this to figure out what x is by making x be alone over here. But to get rid of those two negative tiles, I had to add two positive tiles to cancel it out. And what I do to one side, I do to the other. So I had to add two onto this pile. Now when I count those, I get seven. Okay, the tiles 
I find are actually kind of useful for simple problems like this. As they get more complex, the tiles become less useful. OK, let's try another one. See if any of you can do this one in your head before I reveal the answer. What would be the answer here to this one? What's the what would be the answer to this one? Wait, does it like just extend? Any of any of you have an idea? What do you think, Rain? Negative two x plus two. Anyone agree? Disagree? Just three x. Okay. Okay. Remember, it's a matter of rearranging stuff. Here we have a negative x, right? The sign goes with it. Here we have negative three x's. If we have a negative x and negative three and squish them together, what are we going to get? Well, they're they're just all being put together. Okay. If we use the tiles, we do it this way, we'll get the answer negative 4x plus 2. Okay? So you're very close range, just off by 1 there. Negative 4x's, not negative. Okay. Um, let's skip this one. All right. This is a weird question. This one came up on exams two years in a row. I'm not a big fan of this question, but let's see if you guys could kind of figure it out. Put these in order if x is 3. If x is 3, which is the biggest one? Would it be this one, this one, or this one? one term 1, term 2, or term 3? Term 1? When x is negative 1, which is the biggest one? The largest. Term 2? And what about when x is negative 3, which is... Okay. It depends on what it is. So this is a matter, again, of substitution. So let me show you the big table here. Here's how you could evaluate it. If x is 3, if x is negative 1, and if x is negative 3, you could plug it into all of those. I'm not going to go through all the math with you. But here you can see in the, when x is 3, it goes 3x is greater than x over 3, which is greater than x minus 3. But, shh, when x is negative 1, it changes. The first two switch place. And when x is negative 3, it changes again. Now the last two switch places. It's the kind of question you can expect. Like, these kind of can be a little bit tricky. Simon. Okay, you know what? Let's leave that one. That one is a little bit more of an odd question. It's not the more common one. Okay? What about this one? Okay, here's what I'm saying x is. If x is 4, what's 3x minus 1? And if x is 2, what's 3x minus 1? And then when we get to the third one, the answer is 8. What would x be? Okay. Okay, should we do this one? Okay. You got, the, you got the answer to the first one? For the third one. Okay. Now, in this third one, how are you guys coming up with the answer? There's a couple different ways you could do it. Now, remember, 3x minus 1 equals 8. So think of it that way. 3x minus 1 equals 8. How could I solve this? You know what? Just, just go. How about that? Okay. No, no. Just go would be the best thing to do. Okay. You guys are aware if you leave a class for more than half an hour, you're technically marked absent anyways? Yep. Yeah. So, so best advice, if you're going to skip a class, do it at the beginning because then you can like skip the whole class. It's kind of pointless to skip a class in chunks because, like, I don't know, this is just not useful. Simon. Okay, well, we can deal with that in a minute. Let's just finish up here. Okay, what's the technique? Well, I need x by itself. It's not by itself. I got a couple things over here to deal with. 
Let's deal with them individually. I've got two pieces up here, two terms. Okay? The first term I want to get rid of is the negative 1. How do I get rid of negative 1? Yeah, I just add 1. But what I do to one side, I better do to the other. Let's rewrite this now. The 1's are gone, so I'm just left with 3x. 8 plus 1, oh, that's just 9. Now, I'm still not done. This is a two-step equation. I've got to do two, another step. X needs to be by itself. But in this case, how do I get rid of a 3 times x? Divide by 3. But what I do to one side, I better do to the other. So x equals 9 divided by 3, 3. That's the way you could have approached that one. Okay? It's a two-step process, but know the process. Practice the process. Get comfortable with the process. And then when you get to the test, it's way easier. Okay? If you wait until the test as your first time to try something like that, it's not going to work out for you. Okay? Here is the solutions, okay, with sort of the equations built in, and then the answers. Okay? Okay. Let's just finish up today. Here's the key concepts. Okay, let's boil all of today down to just this. Equations are expressions with an equal sign in the middle, okay? It generates a balancing point between the left-hand side and the right-hand side. They have to balance. Solving the equation often means isolating the variable, making it by itself, okay? If we know what the value of an equation is, use brackets and plug it back into the formula to evaluate it. When dealing with addition and subtraction in algebra, you can rearrange the terms. Practice that, though, okay? And if you really want to look at this in another way, you can also use tiles to model it. Let's break it down even further. Here are the key terms you need to know about today. These are the words that hopefully make sense to you. Equation, isolate, brackets, like terms, rearranging terms, simplifying, and canceling. If those words mean something to you, then you're on the right track. Because that's what it says you need to know, and you relate that to the kind of algebra you're going to be doing. Okay, now I have a whole big assignment that goes with this. I'm not going to give it to you. I'm not. I didn't even make a photocopy of it for you guys. Because... I knew that I was going to be sharing those test results with you guys today. I knew, even though I had the cookies, that, that I couldn't offer you that as a nice sort of, sort of, oh, you did bad on the